So I can't help but I have to share this as art is ending, and I've already shared this story with him, so I'm not gonna, well, it might embarrass him a little bit. Um, but I was in a, a session, and some of you actually may have been there, and we were talking about the employee forums, and one young woman in the group um, said, uh, raised her hand and said she had gone to one, and, and um, she was asked what she thought, and she said, oh, I thought it was great. I'm drinking his Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Um, so to, to really just piggyback on to what Art talked about, I was asked to kind of put this in context of some things that as I look around the room, a lot of you have already seen in as I've come into some of your teams and units and um, different meetings and all of that. So nothing probably that you have not seen before, however, as I was listening, I thought, ooh, this really is a good sort of summary to what Art was talking about because I think some of these change models and the things about resilience are a great piggyback to what he just said in that very personal story. And one of the things that really, um, that I firmly believe and I think is really an important way to think about it for ourselves is that all change is individual. There is no such thing really as organizational change. Organizations change when individuals make the kinds of choices that Art was just talking about, right? The other thing I wanna throw in just in, re in reaction to what I just heard is, I've also worked with some of your teams on teamwork issues where the story goes you know, these two people don't really get along very well. They, in some cases, won't hardly talk to each other or there's issues, teamwork issues. However, and you know what's coming, what happens in a crisis? Boom, no questions asked. They pull together, they work like they're a well-oiled machine, they pull together for that patient care, they do what they need to do, they support each other, they're in it together. That's what we need to really tap into, I think, in, in these situations because it's not a crisis every day. Well, maybe in some of your departments it is. <laughs> looking at the ED staff, maybe in some of your departments it is, but it's not a crisis every day, so how do we really help our staff members understand what that difference is? So why can you, in that crisis, pull on the best of who you are and how you work together and how you support each other and figure out how to do that every day? Instead of saying, well, it's not a crisis, so I'm just gonna go back to not really working with that person. So anyway, those are, that's a little bit of an aside, but I was thinking about that as Art talked, because I know that's something that we've talked a lot about in some of your teams. Um, so here's the, the model, which many of you have seen. I've worked with some of your teams on it in particular, but let me just ask a couple of questions about this, if I can get any of you in the large group to, to speak up a little bit. Um, where would you see, let's use Art's story and really personalize this change model a little bit. So as you kind of heard that, um, where would you say Art probably was on day two? Shock is what I'm hearing a lot of people say of like, what? <laughs> 58 days of cash on hand sounded like not much and all of a sudden it's two and by the way here's all these things you didn't know right so very easy and then frustration probably even some fear as those decisions started to be made I just think this is such a great example of how this change process really um, happens to each one of us and in different ways right and in different ways amongst all of your employees. So if you're not using this, I know some of you, I know, is Sherry Casali here? No, Sherry, I know, for one, carries this around with her since we did, and I am seeing some heads nodding going, yep, she does, she brings it out. And she talks about it, and she says, well, how are you doing today? Where are you? And, the, and I think that's what it's meant for. It's not the be all and end all, but it makes some good conversation, and it also, the, the feedback I've gotten when I've worked with a lot of teams is, it's nice to know this is just kind of normal. 
I'm not alone in kind of getting stuck sometimes on how I'm dealing with this change. So I think Art's example, I'm not going to go through any more detail on it because you've mostly seen this, but what a great example of how this really works. And then his advice on how do you keep yourself moving forward? How do you, those of you who are managers, help others move forward? That's what I want to spend a little bit of time on. This is a little bit different one, and I, I'm going to be one of those horrible speakers that says, I know you can't read this. Um, I didn't realize how light this was. But basically, it's, this is at the end here, people who sort of play the victim, and it, and it typically is about maybe 15 to 20 percent. If you're in a great team, it maybe isn't that many. But this guy is sitting there, head in his hands, saying, why is this happening to me? And sometimes we feel that way, right? And that's where I would think back to what are those? I am making a choice all the time and every change is individual. I choose as an individual how to respond. Um, this, the middle person is, is, it says survivor there and that's where kind of the most people are, 60 to 70 percent. Let's just get it over with and then I can get on with my job. That's the floating that Art talked about, right? Not good enough. I mean, we can be there on certain things, we can kind of sit there for a while, but not, especially for those of you in the room that are leaders, probably not good enough long term and to really help change happen. So the third one there is, okay, what can I do to help make this happen? And that's what they call the navigators. So I share this because I think it goes well with that change curve, but maybe a little bit different way to look at it and to really think about where you are what choices do you make to move into being a navigator of change? Um, and how do you help others? So whether if you're a manager helping your employees, how do you help them kind of see where they are and maybe challenge them with some of those changes, those decisions they might need to make? So wanted to share this as well, just a little bit different way of looking at that. And then with my last few minutes, just to, to bring in that point about how important it is that for all of us, we really take care of ourselves. The, the analogy that I've been using a lot lately is the, um, how many of you have ever been on an airplane? And you know that, um, you know, first they teach you how to do a seat belt, which I think is kind of amusing these days, because hopefully we all know that and have known that for many years. Um, I'm old enough to remember when that was kind of like you paid attention to that because you weren't really sure about a seat belt. Um, but the oxygen mask instruction, what's the oxygen mask instruction? Put your own on first before you try to help others, right? That's what we all need to do. If you aren't taking care of yourself as a caregiver for your patients, as a coworker who can be supportive of others, as a manager who's leading people through change, you gotta put your oxygen mask on first before you can help others. And that's really what thinking about resilience is about. So I love this quote and I love this picture even more. Um, Man has never made any material as resilient as the human spirit. Thank goodness, huh? Um, that we have that. Um, so I'm not going to spend time here. We know this, right? And many of you have seen this, but just reminders that it's all of these things that we make choices about and do for ourselves that help us stay well and help us put our oxygen on so that we can continue to move forward and make positive choices. Um, and then the last um, quote that I really love is this idea, everything can be taken from a person but one thing, the last of the human, whoops, it's moving on its own, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's way, and that's really what Art's message for us was. I'm going to go back to this because I'm just going to spend a minute here because it really echoes a lot of the things that Art already shared with you, um, but I think this list is worth um, putting on a handout. And so if you took the card, you have most of what's on this list. I actually added a couple of things in after I saw what Art was going to talk about. But things that we can do and encourage others in your units, in your teams that report to you, whoever, coworkers to do. One is check your facts. That story about the bankruptcy, I actually shared with Art because I had heard that um, from a night nurse. 
Did, well, did you know that the new CEO bankrupt his old organization? And then I heard just last week in a meeting that that rumor is still going around. And so I told him that, and he said, well, let me incorporate that. And I said, that would be great. That'd be awesome, and I thought it was a great story. But we need to really do that for ourselves, right? We create our own stress so often by just responding to us, and we don't know that it's true. Um, we don't know what the facts really are. What can we do to kind of stay grounded and not overreact? Um, again, choosing attitudes, seeking out support. This is what Art talked about, making positive choices. Practice that mindfulness. A lot of, of, we've talked a lot about the idea of just something as simple as two feet, one breath. And sometimes that's all you need. Just pause before you proceed to either say something, to go into that patient room, to go interact with somebody. Sometimes that's all we need. Feel two feet on the floor. And you feel that really good, deep, relaxing, relaxing breath, then go. Um, and then last, I think it's always a good reminder, we are resilient. We've been through tons of changes, all of us, right? In our lives, in our work, here at Meritor, whatever, we can do this. Um, and not that there won't be tough days, but we're, we've got pretty resilient spirits. So I will end on that and turn things back to Sujanti. There you go.